Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, I'm going to be discussing Malfoy. And I'm not talking about Draco or Lucius. I'm not even talking about Abraxas. I'm going to be talking about Draco Malfoy's great-great-great-grandfather, Brutus, one of the most prejudiced wizards of his era. I can't say this with complete certainty, because there are gaps in the Malfoy family tree, but I suspect that Brutus is the son of Lucius Malfoy I, who far preceded the Lucius Malfoy that we know from the Harry Potter story. Brutus was born sometime in the early to mid 1600s, while the Lucius we are familiar with was born in 1953. Between those two men, however, are, in chronological order, Septimus Malfoy, who was born sometime between 1770 and 1780, and Abraxas Malfoy, Lucius' father, a man you've probably heard of before. Abraxas was Draco's grandfather, and was born sometime in the early 1900s. With this information, I feel that we can safely infer that Brutus was the great-great-grandfather of Lucius, and great-great-great-grandfather of Draco. When we think of the Malfoy family lineage, certain words come to most people's minds, but these words scarcely hold a positive connotation. Usually, when someone says Malfoy, you might think bigot or prejudiced, but that's a reputation that was earned through centuries of intolerance. These are characteristics almost ingrained in their bloodline, and it wasn't until really Draco that this intolerance began to waver somewhat. Historically, they are a wealthy family of morally crooked witches and wizards that will whimper when caught red-handed and gloat when in a position of power. It is often said of the Malfoy family that you will never find one at the scene of the crime, though their fingerprints might be all over the guilty wand. Independently wealthy, with no need to work for a living, they have generally preferred the role of power behind the throne, happy for others to do the donkey's work and to take the responsibility for failure. They have helped finance many of their preferred candidates' election campaigns, which have, it is alleged, included paying for dirty work such as hexing the opposition. But after doing some research, I think I've managed to find the most awful Malfoy, Brutus. Let's kick things off with one of his quotes. Nothing is a surer sign of weak magic than a weakness for non-magical company. This is a clear representation of the mindset of Brutus Malfoy, a British pureblood wizard who happened to be the editor of the anti-muggle periodical Warlock at War. It's probably no surprise to you that Brutus was prejudiced towards Muggleborns, but that alone wasn't good enough for him. He was intent on targeting and exposing anyone and everyone that would even dare to fraternize with Muggles or Muggleborns. It was an advocate of the fact that witches and wizards who associated with Muggles lacked magical talent, an entirely skewed perspective likely fabricated out of hate. From the Beetle and the Bard book, influential wizards of the day, such as Brutus Malfoy, editor of Warlock at War, an anti-Muggle periodical, perpetuated the stereotype that a muggle lover was about as magical as a squib. In 1675, Brutus wrote, This we may state with certainty. Any wizard who shows fondness for the society of muggles is of low intelligence, with magic so feeble and pitiful that he can only feel himself superior if surrounded by muggle pigmen. Nothing is a surer sign of weak magic than a weakness for non-magical company. What likely induced this perspective, however, was the era that Brutus was born into. During his lifetime, persecution of witches and wizards by muggles was at its height. The magical and muggle worlds were interwoven somewhat, and tensions were high. Anti-muggle sentiment was popular and widespread. Brutus was just a strong advocate of spreading the message. What made him truly evil, however, was that he used his influence and his platform for evil. A large platform can be as sinister as any tool in the wrong hands, and Brutus truly took advantage of his editorial position. What I can say, however, is that fortunately, his message wasn't powerful enough for witches and wizards to ignore the absolute fact that fraternizing with Muggleborns had no relevance to magical capability. The prejudice eventually died out in the face of overwhelming evidence that some of the world's most brilliant wizards were, to use the common phrase, muggle lovers. Though there are a few references to Brutus in Harry Potter canon, some have suspected that he may have appeared in a portrait in the Malfoy Manor. That's it for this video. Had you guys heard of Brutus before? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, there is plenty to be learned, even from a bad teacher. What not to do, how not to be.